Hello everybody, I am Jared Ross, a genie vlogger, and on today's vlog, I will be discussing nebula genomics. Yeah. Nebula Genomics is a company that does whole genome sequencing. And what whole genome sequencing is, is where they literally are sequencing your entire genome. So they're going to be doing your autosomal DNA, your Y chromosome DNA, your mitochondrial DNA. You're getting the entire thing. Now I recently learned about Nebula Genomics through a webinar presentation by Adam Brown where he was discussing the Avotenu Jewish DNA project, specifically the Western Sephardi Y DNA project. And he talked about how doing your whole genome was actually very good for doing your Y DNA, for looking into the further amounts. So if you have family tree DNA Y testing and you're looking to do the big Y, whole genome sequencing is another route to basically get that done. Nebula Genomics actually has a partnership with family tree DNA, which is one of the big reasons why I decided to get this kit. So what I'm really hoping for from this is to get a lot of information about my Y ancestry. Specifically, I want to find the SNP markers that define my branch of the Y tree and kind of get a really good idea of the past two to 3,000 years of my Y lineage, my paternal lineage. I ordered the kit a little over a week ago. Uh, it came in today. Uh, it might have actually come in yesterday. I didn't check the mail, so that's on me. Um, but it just came in uh, very similar to a lot of the other companies that I've done. Um, it came with a thing of instructions where it explains what to do. And with this kit, it seems like it's, it's along the lines of the Family Tree DNA kits or what you would get at, um, I think it's MyHeritage 2, where instead of doing the spit tube, you're actually going to be doing swabs. And then uh, in the kit, try to hold it up, they have a little bag that you put it back in and then the vials that you're gonna put the swabs into. You're supposed to wait an hour before you do the swabs um, where you don't drink anything, eat anything, chew any tobacco. Um, I think they have some other stuff with it too. Don't use mouthwash, don't brush your teeth um, because it can cause problems with uh, getting the sample and you don't wanna send in a sample that they're not able to actually extract any DNA because then you're not really gonna get results. And if they have really degraded results, then that's not gonna be good for you either. Yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, I know on a lot of my reaction videos, I always talk about how, spit, you know, I find it funny that they put spit takes in there, but you don't really see a whole lot of uh, buckle swab takes, so we're gonna do some of that. Now, one of the things they, they have you do before you actually send it in is there's a register number on the kit and you register that on the website. Um, that is likely for the safety of the customer, the privacy. What it does is, is they will have the kit number as well as your personal information. They send this out to a third party laboratory, which does the extraction and actually does the array for the DNA. So they're doing the actual sequencing. Um, my understanding is that this com the company that they have the DNA extraction done is actually located in Hong Kong, um, which was one thing that I wasn't super comfortable with. Uh, and I had actually read a few other genealogists who had decided not to do this because that it was in Hong Kong. Um, but I had seen others who had done it and I saw that they had this system, which a lot of the other companies use as well. So basically, uh, Nebula Genomics will have my name and my information when I signed up, along with the kit number. When I send this out to uh, Nebula, uh, this actually goes to Nebula, not to the lab. They will probably then repackage it to then send on to the lab, and the lab will only receive this number. So that lab won't have any of my information um, They'll just have this number, and then when they have the results, they'll send the results back to Nebula, who has my number and my name, and then they'll assign those together. So that's supposed to keep your privacy in terms of, you know, that they're using a third-party lab. 
Now, this is all an assumption based on my knowledge of other companies. I don't know for sure that this is how Nebula works. Um, I did... I did read through their facts, and I don't remember them saying anything about that necessarily. Um, but I'm sure that, you know, a company like this is going to want to do as much as they can to keep their customers safe, or at least you hope so. So let's go ahead and uh, get this done. Okay, so for the first one, I'm opening it up. So you take this out. Throw that away. Take this out and I'm just going to rub the inside of my cheek rotating for 45 seconds. All right, so that was 45 seconds. I've rubbed my cheek nice and well. So now I'm gonna open up one of these vials. I'm going to insert this tip down and then it snaps. Like that. All right, so now I'm gonna close it. And sample one complete. Now time for sample two. And then uh, send it off and wait for the results. All right, so that's 45 seconds. Gonna do the same thing that I did before. Put it in. Snap it off, there we go, close this, and boom. So I've got both of these. Hopefully you can't see that actual code, otherwise I'm gonna have to try to blur it out. So put it in my Ziploc baggie. I don't know why, but whenever I do these things that are just like so final of like pull this off and seal it, I'm always worried that I'm screwing something up, some little thing, and then as soon as I seal it, I'll notice it. So hopefully I didn't do that this uh, this time. I, I don't think I did. Uh, but now all it's uh, now all it is is just going to be mailing this off and uh, getting the results. So next time you see me. I should have some results. So my results are in. They actually came in a while back, back in September. Um, I've been waiting to do the video because I was hoping that they would have their ancestry uh, portion of the results up. But it looks like they're actually still waiting for it, which I'm going to go into that in a bit. So, But we're just going to jump right into uh, the web page. So um, here is the page uh, being logged in for my results and you can see um, just kind of a basic web page. They have surveys that you complete. I've completed all of them. Um, so we're just gonna go straight to their reporting. And so with the reporting, it takes you first to the library. So you'll see up top, they have traits, then deep ancestry, then the library, gene analysis, and then genome browser. And so what we'll do, we'll start from left to right. So even though it's got us starting on the library, we're gonna go over to tra traits. So for traits, this is pretty similar to what 23andMe does. This is basically what's known as phenotyping. So what it is, is that it's using the DNA markers and the variants that it's finding and then comparing it to known variants connected to different things that have to do with your appearance, how you act, uh, as they put out body athleticism, nutrition, and diet. So they have four main different categories. So we're just going to go through all each of them real quick because the, the thing I was disappointed about so was that we haven't gotten the deep ancestry stuff, but I still was able to use this for my genealogy so far. As I said before, a big thing with this was the Y-DNA, and I was able to do that using another website. So I'll discuss that in a bit. So for the traits, it gives us these four main breakdowns, and it's pretty similar to uh, 23andMe. You can see earwax type, you likely have wet earwax. Uh, freckling, you have an average chance to have or develop freckles. Um, hair thickness, testosterone, etc. But the cool thing is, is that when... Uh, as opposed to 23andMe, this goes really in depth. So especially if you're like a DNA nerd or especially if you like you have, you know, a degree in science and you know the, you know, in-depth stuff, you can do learn more and it will go into talking about that specific gene. And then you can even go further and you can go and read the actual paper, the link to it that's 
defining what they're using. So it's it's really cool to be able to do all that kind of stuff. So they give you a whole lot of stuff. I'm just going to kind of click through them real quick because, you know, being a genealogy channel, I'm not super, super interested in this stuff. But you can see it does alcohol sensitivity, asparagus metabolite odor, caffeine use, uh, misophonia, cilantro preference, which I actually do not like cilantro. Um, I actually, well, I, I, um, I'm what's known as a super taster. I did one of those tests where they like color your tongue and they like count it and all that. And I also did, they give you a strip, a bitter strip. I don't know if any other super tasters are out there who've done the tests. Uh, if you are comment below, but, um, I, I do not like cilantro. They have nicotine response, snacking behavior. I'm a big snacker of all kinds. Um, and then pain sensitivity, uh, for body athleticism, they go into your blood pressure height, Jimmy Lakes, longevity, you know, they go into a whole lot of stuff, but just like kind of 23 me and I, I, I know some of the other tests now offer health stuff too, or trait information. It's very similar because what it's going to say is you're likely, you're not likely, you're more likely, you have an average chance. Um, so it's just, you know, they can't tell you for sure. Uh, but just very interesting stuff. And then lastly, they have nutrition and diet. Um, now, I will say I have gone through this a couple of times, and I believe that they have updated some of these. Like, I don't remember seeing these vitamins here. And that's one of the coolest things, I think, about Nebula is that they constantly are updating. But most of the time, it's dealing with their library, which we're going to get into in a second. So after traits is the deep ancestry, which obviously they don't have the deep ancestry, but I actually did figure out a uh, way to get to a page that they have with what they expect to be on the deep ancestry. Here's that page, and this is, as you can see, they're going to be doing it with family tree DNA. Um, originally, they announced it was going to be in the second quarter of the year 2020 this year. Um, obviously that hasn't happened yet. And that's one of the reasons why it took me a while to, to make this video. I actually got my results at the end of September. So, you know, it's now early December, almost mid December, honestly. So I've waited almost, you know, two and a half months almost. So they have, you know, they have this plan to partner with family tree DNA. Um, and these are all the things that you will supposedly be able to do with the ancestry reports i'm assuming available like that you'll be able to get this from family tree dna without getting extra uh without paying extra so you can explore your heritage on your paternal line so paternal ancestry which was the big thing for me so it's basically the equivalent of doing big y 700 but technically it's even better than big y 700 um so you'll be able to connect with your paternal line relatives so basically you'll get access to their y dna database uh, for matching which is great uh, you can follow the migration path to your male ancestors. Basically, they're going to give you a really defined haplogroup and you can follow that haplogroup up, which we're going to talk about a bit more in a second. We can also trace your surname to its roots and build. What they're basically saying is that it's your paternal ancestors. If you get a whole lot of matches where it's all the same name, but maybe changed a little bit differently with each different person, then you kind of have an idea that all of these people are relatives. It's all coming from one ancestral, you know, background and the names just changed over time uh, they're also giving access to family finder stuff so this is the autosomal ancestry so discover the percentage breakdown of your origins that's the ethnicity admixture which if you go and look on youtube there's like one or two videos of people who got the nebula tests in the past and they had a genetic admixture available at some point but i guess they must have taken it away i'm assuming because they were then teaming up with family tree DNA, but I'm not sure. Um, connect with your autosomal DNA relatives within the last five generations, which is a big thing because that's telling me that it's going to link in a way where you can see your genetic matches, your autosomal genetic matches, which is great. Um, and then, which technically you can do anyway. You can download your results from uh, from Nebula and then upload it to family tree DNA to get those matches. So that's not a huge deal, but it just them integrating it into one website might make it great. Um, and then learn if you have a connection with ancient European groups. But then another big thing is they give you the maternal ancestor, the mitochondrial 
DNA stuff as well. So explore your heritage on your maternal line. So it'll give you your haplogroup. Connect with your maternal line relatives in their mitochondrial database. So that's a big thing. You get access to the mitochondrial matches. And then follow the migration paths of your female ancestors. Fancy way of saying you'll get your haplogroup. And then receive a personalized mtDNA. I think they're talking about they create these personalized mitochondrial DNA stories. Basically, it'll say that you know, once it figures out where you are in the haplogroup or their phylogenetic tree, then it will give you more information. Now, I know that I wasn't able to get any of this information at this point through Nebula and Family Tree DNA. Technically, I could have uploaded it for the autosomal stuff, but there's at this time, at least as far as I know, there's no way to upload your Y chromosome information or your mitochondrial DNA information to Family Tree DNA to get into their database. But I was able to do it in another way, and I used a website called Yful. And Yful is a really cool company. You can basically upload your full whole genome sequence, which um, I'm gonna just jump back to Nebula. You can do your download your D DNA data, and it gives you a lot of options. So you have your CRAM file, your CRA file, uh, which is the information for CRAM, FASTQ, VCF, TBI. So some of these are bigger than others. So if you look at the bottom, you can see the CRAM file is about 50 gigabytes. Whereas if you're doing your VCF or your TBI, 300 megabytes, two megabytes. Uh, so a very, very big difference, but for the Y full, you need your cram. That's the best one to use. And because it's 50 gigabytes, you have to find somewhere on the internet to host it, which then you have to link that to Y full. So for me, I put it on Dropbox. I had to buy a Dropbox, uh, account, um, because I'd already used the trial previously for something else. So I had to upload it and then link it to my Y full. So then I linked it to Y full. Um, doing Y full, it's only $49, and that gets you both the mitochondrial and the Y DNA and all the other stuff they have. Um, so I'm just going to go to home page. It's already got me logged in. And so I'm just going to jump into the haplogroup and SNPs because if you remember, that was the main thing I wanted to do for this because I'd already done my DNA on family tree DNA. Uh, I'd done the whole genome, or not the whole genome, but they. Uh, what did they call it then? I forgot. I forgot what they called it. It was like the the genome kit something. I got it way back in like 2013 in the earlier days of Family Tree DNA, and um, they had me as JM172, which is basically a version of haplogroup J2. So for this, this defines it much more specifically. So going into my haplogroups, this is going to show really in depth. So for a lot of genealogists out there, this may be more than what you really want. Um, for others, this may be exactly what you've been looking for. So you can see here, this has everything. This is showing all of my terminal SNPs, and this is my specific Y haplogroup, which actually technically I'm even more subdefined than this. So this is uh, my subclade. So now it's going to pull me up in what's known as the phylogenetic tree. So here I am right here. You can see new. And there's my ID. It's not a big deal to have that out there. And then you can see my paternal ancestry traces to Ukraine, specifically to Trinivstia. I'm <laughs> I probably pronounce that terribly. I know I always pronounce everything terribly. I'm sorry, but um, you can see this is this is my subclade. So JZ42946, and then even further JZ42983, which then. They have just a general overview, me and this other person from Lithuania who I have been in touch with, and then these other uh, three folks, one who is defined as the JBY22607, and then two who are further defined, so an even further subclade from that, JY102756. And so tracing up the haplogroups, basically this is tracing up my paternal line. This is the phylogenetic tree, the family tree of all of humanity. So this is where I am. And then this is my subclade, which comes from the JZ42946. And that comes from JZ42942. And that comes from JZ42947 and up and up and up. And then it all the way back up to um, uh, Y Adam, as he's known. And so it's really much more defined because you can see J2 right here. That's as well defined as it was before. And that was with a Y67 test. 
Um, it would probably be about the same with any of the STR tests. You'd have to do the SNP testing to get these further subclades on family tree DNA, which is possible. If you've done your Y-DNA on family tree DNA, then you can purchase SNP packages to get things. But the thing is, is that it's kind of a hit or miss thing. You could buy a SNP package and maybe the SNPs you're looking for aren't really in there. Maybe you find some in there. Maybe you have to end up buying another SNP package uh, or you can sometimes buy them singularly, buy single SNPs. Um, but I'm just going to show something real quick. You can actually do the live. So there's different versions. There's the scientific, the chart, and the live. So we're going to go to the live, which puts me in a more defined subclade. So you can see here, before I was defined JZ42983, well, actually, I'm even more defined. My subclade would be JBY55410. And the only two people who are from that subclade is myself and this gentleman whose ancestry traces to Lithuania. Now, I'm going to go back to the classic view, and you can see the up here, it formed about 5,200 years ago, um, but it has a big range, so I'm trying to get that pop-up. So you can see that, that pop-up, it has a huge range in the years. So it says 5,200 years, but it could have been about 6,400 to 4,100 years before present, YBP. Um, and so there's there's you're not very sure necessarily but then when we get down to this subclay between this gentleman and i because we have that further defined by the live that's going to be closer than more likely that's going to be closer than that other one so we're still looking real far back i mean thousands of years so in terms of genealogically relevant it's very difficult for many people to make this genealogically relevant without having a lot of matches um, so you can do a lot of that kind of stuff. They actually give you the same thing with the mitochondrial. Um, so we're going to go to the mitochondrial tree and with the mitochondrial tree, because of how it is, there's no real difference. H1 AI one is exactly what I got from family tree DNA. Um, and so you can pull up a similar tree. So here's myself with uh, my my maternal line also traces to Ukraine. Then there's a whole bunch of others with similar H1AI1. Um, and then that comes from this. And then that comes from H1H and then so on all the way up to mitochondrial Eve. So you can still make this somewhat genealogically relevant at this point. Um Unfortunately, not fully yet. I'm really, really can't wait until they get into this deep ancestry stuff. Um, I'm really interested to see what they do and especially what they do that's different than uh, what Family Tree DNA already gives you. Um, so now that we've gone over all that, I'm going to jump through the last three things pretty, pretty quickly, I think. Um, so first is a library. And this is a big reason why a lot of people will get the Nebula kit. Because what they do with the library is they constantly are updating it as new scientific papers and research papers are published that have to do with um, defining specific markers that correlate to certain things that they're looking at. And there's a lot. <clears throat> so you can look at the mass amount of category here. Um, and what happens actually is as I scroll down, it's going to load more. And you're going to see this list well, event, it, it kind of increases more and more as you get more options. Um, and so there's like just a ton of stuff that they do. Um, and it's, re it's really, really interesting. So I'm actually, I'm going to go up and you can, you can change it differently. You know, you can do it newly add what's the most newly added. What's the date published of the, of that paper or polygenic score basically how high it is so my my strongest ones and so let's look at this type 2 diabetes now this is much much more in depth than you'll get with 23me or any of the other sites as far as i know unless there's something that i really haven't necessarily messed with but it gives you the information about the research that they did about diabetes and then it gives you the variance it tells you the variance it tells you what allele you have it tells you what allele is usually expected and then it tells you even your genotype so at that position rs1192738181 
the allele associated with type 2 diabetes is C. And we go over and we see my genotype. I have a T and a C there. So yes. But then also the one above it, I have a, it's a C. And then I have C and C right there. So it gives you really in depth. So for the people who are really sciencey type of people, like really into that kind of stuff, this is the cool thing. And if you click the link, it will take you to the study. So you can always go in depth into the study. Um, so it, it really is really cool. It has a lot of different stuff that, you know, all, all sorts of different things that you could look into with, um, you know, any part of your life. Basically, a lot of stuff when you're going through the traits, how they have those defined. This is kind of like even more. Now, I will say one of the things that does annoy me a little bit in terms of the library is that it is sometimes kind of hard to find uh, certain ones that you're looking for because what happens is, is when you're doing the search and the tags, it usually only applies to the ones you already have pulled up. So you usually have to scroll down and have it load up. Um, I might be I might be doing it a little wrong and that's maybe that's why that's happening to me. Um, but I've just, I've just noticed that, but they have a lot of cool stuff in here that even has like weird stuff like income. You could look at how it affects your income and things like that. Um, and then just, I mean, looking through the tags, you can see there's a lot of different things that, uh, they can look at. So like, we'll look at obesity as an example and wait for that to load up. So here we have, it's loaded up. So not a whole lot on obesity. Um, looks like about six things. Now I've I've noticed this where there's some where they have it in there and then they won't have any sort of score or anything. But you could end up going through this stuff for days because there's just so many and it, it is very interesting. But now we're going to get into some stuff that I'm not going to go too in depth with because this is the kind of stuff where you really have to have a science background. And like for myself, I was, I've been learning a lot through this, but I did have somewhat of a good idea with this background just because of my work in the forensic field and learning a lot more of the science stuff um, through my job at DNA Labs. Um, so just jumping into the gene analysis, uh, it gives you this breakdown. There's these blog posts, which you really should read. So when you go into this, you do launch and it launches a whole nother web page and um, so it comes up with this page, you have this legend, which gives you the information. And so it asks you to enter a gene name. So just one that everyone basically knows MC1R. So then when we do MC1R, a very, a very well-known variant, it brings up all of this information. So it gives you the actual variants. And then you can look over here. You can look at what it means, the different things, deletion, insertion, complex. Is it a SNP? Then you've got the different impact. But then you also have all of this information that relates to MC1R that you can read about. So advances in receptor-targeted radio-labeled peptides for melanoma imaging and therapy. So this is really, really in-depth. And you can look at different information about it. Uh, a lot of this stuff is a little bit beyond my knowledge because I'm more of a genealogy guy, not as much of a science guy. But this is still the kind of stuff that I imagine there are many people who do genetic genealogy and because they have maybe a science background or they have some sort of correlation with this field, maybe they already have wanted something similar to this. So lastly, we're going to go into the genome browser, and this one is similar to the gene analysis where you really need to read about it on how to use it to get a good idea of what is going on. Um, so basically the way that it works is it's allowing you to view your entire chrome, your, your, all your genes. So you can see your genes. Here's your first chromosome, second, third, all the way up, 22, then your X, and then your Y if you're a, a male. Um, so we can do pretty much anything and you can look from this menu that it gives you all these different options to select, uh, for what to view. So, um, we're going to do, they give you actually one that you can just look up. So the way that it works, if you're going to do a search, the way that it works, you put first, uh, if you know a specific gene that you want to look at, you put the chromosome number that you want, and then you put the number of the gene and then you just press enter and then it loads your sequence. So here we have what's uh, my sequence and these are all the different reads of it and there's probably a lot more going on with this than I understand they give you a lot of different settings that you can do 
with each of these and it's something i'm still learning but um for someone some of you out there maybe this is something that is quite familiar to you um there are user guides there's a tutorial videos i've watched a bunch of those um i've read the user guides it's still very confusing this is very advanced stuff now, if you are interested in buying one of these whole genome sequence kits from Nebula, you can go down into my description below. I will we'll have an affiliate link there. Uh, they usually have it on different discounts. I'm pretty sure they're gonna have holiday discounts. And if you click through that link and purchase it through it, then I actually get a kickback. So it won't cost you any extra. You'll get the kit just like you wanted and you'll be helping out my channel. Um, but thank you so much for checking out this video. If you did enjoy, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I will be making another video about the Deep Ancestry once that does come out, but we have to wait for it to come out. Um, if you would like to subscribe, you can click right about here. It's completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.